Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a product review video. Now, you might be saying, what is that? I've never been new to your channel. I've never known anything about this. From time to time, I will get a, a set of heads in that I haven't seen before, and I'll review them, and I will flow them, and I share the flow numbers. This is one of them. What is this head? Well, this head is the Brodix, and I've got the wrong side. This is the Brodix 3 Extra 327. It's a big block Chevy head. Um, this is kind of newer. I think they've only had it out for two years, but even though it's had it out two years, so far no one has actually ordered one from me. Yes, I do sell this head, and you can purchase it from me. Um, anyway, let's get started with what the head is. It's a 24 degree big block Chevy head. The stock valve angle for a big block is a 26. Most aftermarkets do at least 24. 24 usually works with most aftermarket pistons too. So it's a 24 degree valve angle. It is not raised up. It is a square port, which I'll flip around to show you much more in a minute, but it's 327 cc's. Um, so what makes this new? Well, Brodix has a couple different lines and I'll go with through them with you. They've got a dash two line, which is like their Brodix um, BB2s, BB2 Plus, BB2 Extra, the Dragon Slayers, the Race Rights. Those are all 26 degrees, and they've got a different chamber than design than this. Then they have the 3 Extra Series. It's more of their racier line. And from that, they've got a 327, a 345, a 335, a 353, a 363, a 365, 380. A bunch in that line, and this is that line. This is the first new one because it's the smallest one that's offered in the 3 Extra line, 327 cc's. And honestly, I've been waiting for it because the next... The next size larger is 335 cc's, but it's an oval port and not like a one that you'd find on a factory uh, 454. It's a much larger oval port and not a lot of intakes work with it. It's a great head, just not a lot of intakes work with it. And for some engines, especially on the 496 stuff, it's just kind of too big. Um, then they've got a 345. So the point being is they kind of left out all the people who needed a much smaller head and kind of forced them to go to their two extra line, which is a 26 degree valve angle stuff. So I was dying for them to make this head because this is a 24 degree valve angle, more modern design, definitely a more modern design chamber. It just should be better. And they finally made it. This would be a part for 496 that you're trying to race. Um, I can't say that these are really economical. Um, things seem to keep going up in price, but they're not bad. So it has a two 300 intake valve and a 188 exhaust valve. 45 degrees seat, so they should last pretty good. The head itself is as cast. And I know you're like, I see some CNC stuff. You do. But it's an as cast head, but it does have a CNC chamber, CNC bulb blend on both the intake and the exhaust. And what you just saw here is, as you can tell, a CNC gasket match on the intake. So 327 cc's on the intake. I have no idea on the exhaust. I will say the exhaust is raised up. All the three extras, except for the race right three extras, have a raised up exhaust. So what's that mean? Sometimes your headers don't clear. That's one of those things you kind of need to check. Um, each one seems like it's raised up a different amount. I think they're like 600 thousandths up. You can look at the literature for that. Um, remember, it's not directly relational. So it might be raised 600 thousandths, but this is in the V shape. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's actually going 600 thousandths higher from where your headers are. However, if your headers have that much extra clearance, you're probably good. The chambers measure 119 cc's, and so far, just looking at the head, it doesn't look that bad. Usually, with some of the heads, you see this being the seat angle. This right here is the top cut. You usually see this bad ledge right here where it kind of disrupts flow. There is a ledge there, and you can feel me dragging on it, especially over here, but not as bad as some of the other heads. If you look at their BB2 line, huge ridge, and it just kills flow. This one's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flow it and share the real flow numbers with you. I'm going to flow on my Sanyaz bench. I'm going to warn you, just because I'm in a hurry, I'm only going to flow the long runner. For those that are new to the big blocks, big blocks have a long runner and a short runner. They enter the chamber in a different area. If you look at the long runner, it actually aims towards the center. The short runner aims towards the wall. The short runner usually flows less. No one really ever advertises this one. Although you can look at my other product review videos and I usually tell what the flow number from the head is on the short runner. I'm not on this one just because I'm kind of in a hurry. So I'm gonna flow just a long runner. I'm gonna flow it on two different bores. I'm gonna flow it on a 4310, which would be real common for a 496. And I'm gonna flow it on a 4625, 
just because that's the biggest one I've got, just to see how much difference it actually makes. That'd be something that pretty close bore size if you're doing a 565 or 582, 598, that sort of stuff, or even a 632. So let me go ahead and get this on a flow bench and I can share some results with you. Okay, this is how I flowed the head. So I use actually a radius entry plate and then the, the plate's actually a little bit bigger than the port. So I use modeling clay to go around it and kept it bolted on through both tests. So the only thing that changed was just the bore size. So I floated on two bore sizes, 4310, 4625. Um, I just used a regular MLS gasket. That's what you see sticking out there. And that spark plug has a projected tip, no exhaust pipe. So let's look at the numbers because they are kind of a little shocking. Actually, let me show you this first. This is the overlay of the numbers. Cause I know some people like this, this graphical view better and I'll get to the raw numbers in a minute. What you see on top, these two lines here are the intake flow and these two bottom ones are the exhaust flow. This blue line, which I don't know if it's gonna show blue on your screen because it's just the way the computer is, but this top line that you see here is a 4625 bore and that's a 4310 bore. Do you see how much difference it makes? A lot. Wait till you see the raw numbers, quite a bit. Now, if you do, do look though, it drops underneath here, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But yeah, it does flow less than the 4310 at this point, which would be between nine, nine tenths of an inch or lift and one inch. And I don't even want to get into the, well, no one has a can that big. Some do, just not you. But that flow number is important, and that's the reason why. The exhaust flow, what you see here is the top lines of 4625, and the bottom one's 4310. As you can tell, yeah, they're pretty close, not near as the difference you see on the intake side. Let's look at the raw numbers now. So this is the 4310, this is the 4625. If you look, a tenth of an inch valve with very little difference. It starts gaining some there, but almost 10 CFM gain there at three. Gigantic, almost 30 CFM there. Same there, that is almost 30 CFM. Um, quite a bit there too. It went from a 241 to a 270, you can call it. So big gain there. That's about 18 CFM, uh, about 10 CFM. But here's where it starts going different. If you look at these two, the 900 and one inch, it flows less. Several people have asked, why do you float a one inch? Nobody cares. This actually tells you how stable the port is. Do you know why it backed up here, but didn't do it on the 4310 like this? How come it flows more here? Simple. Um, because the bore is shrouded more, the valve is more shrouded because of the bore, that slows down the air so it can make the short side turn easier. Hence, it flows more air. When the bore is out of the way, more air can be drawn through the port, and the speeds over the short side get too fast, and it actually flows less air up here. That's what's happening. So that's the reason why I float a one inch. It kind of tells you. Now, is this like mean the head's garbage? Absolutely not. What that means is uh, the port's small. So typically the smaller ports, if you don't, you could size them right, like do different things in the ports still make 327 cc's and you get to carry the whole way. But typically on smaller ports, this is more common to see. If it's a very large port, not I typically keep flowing. It doesn't mean that the head sucks by the way. It just this gives me more information. So if you're nothing else like, I don't care. I've only got a cam that's 700 lift, that's fine. But this stuff tells me more information about the head. And the more information I have, the better. Now look at the exhaust. It's relatively close. Like you look, they're about the same, about the same, about the same. A little bit better there, a little bit better there, a little bit better there. It's really not until 700 and beyond that the difference really shows on the exhaust side quite a bit different from the intake. The intake started showing quite a bit more at the lower. This didn't really make a difference until I got up the top. So anyway, there's your uh, flow numbers, both bore sizes. It's a really good head. So very good head. Um, the ballpark range for how much it costs, they're about $2,800 assembled up to 3,200, depending on what spring package you go with. So you can go with the solid roller spring, obviously costs more than the hydraulic roller spring. Also, which spring you want for a solid roller, triple versus dual. But that's about a ballpark of what they run right now. Granted, prices keep changing. Um, nobody that I know of them has them in stock. They're about a four-month wait as they're recording this, which is September 29th, 2022. Uh, that could change. So anyway, um, hope you enjoyed the video. Get a lot out of it. If I know some of you are like, well, how does this compare to the AFR-325? I haven't flowed one of those in like five years. And that's long before I started YouTube. If I ever get a new one in, I'll do a video about it. Um, I'd hate to say what I think it flowed, remember what it flowed. 
Um, so I'll just wait till I get one in and I could actually do a little comparison. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Guys, remember, I'm no Superman. You guys take care.